welcome to Anderson's TV. My name is Jack Tuxby, that's a Maltese Falcon. This is the Casio CDP S100, and I'm doing a series of lessons on this keyboard. And in this one, I want to talk about five ways to play an interesting five chord. I'll explain a bit more, but it's going to be really accessible, hopefully, and for you guys that want to rock some posher sounding stuff, maybe in the key of C. So let's go. Sounds pretty posh, right? That's what we're going to learn today. And it might sound, oh, that's crazy. And we're going to try to do it without talking about crazy chord extensions and things like that. I've got a series of lessons that I've done on the channel that are all available in a playlist. And I think the very first one I did many moons ago was about this whole concept. And forgive me if you've watched any of my other videos, thank you. But I wax on about this methodology of playing C like this, where we point at C, put his little thing, um, middle finger next to it on the D, and then we go thumb down to a G, play the octave with a pinky and we get this shape from left to right, and we put a C in the bottom. That's how I like to play C a lot of the time, because it means that we can just move our left hand to any white note, and get loads of cool stuff, you don't have to stress about it, all those things. Now, there's this magic to this shape, and one of the great reasons for doing it is to, by altering it in this very simple way, which is, we're going to keep our index finger on C, middle finger on D, pinky on G. So it sounds like this. Play that with me. Now, instead of our thumb being on the G, you've got to keep, promise me you keep this the same, because everyone goes, oh, and they lift their hand. It's good to just keep some contact with the, with the keys. Don't do this a lot, because you're going to get lost. So keep yourself on the keys there. C, D, and G, right? And we're going to move this thumb up to the black note that's immediately above it, okay? So a half step, A flat if you know the note names, but it's just this black note that's right next to it. So it's going to sound like this. Because I played it before, it's actually a cool sound. If you walk away and come back 10 minutes later and you're not used to that harmony, it might sound like mental, horrible noises, especially if you're not into jazz, right? But this sound, so it's going to be A flat on your thumb. And we don't really need to do this, but I'm going to show you again, which is we've got C, D and G, which is the same as this. We've just moved this up one note, one semitone to A flat. Now, if it feels like, oh God, that's really complicated. I'm used to making that move. Let's move our stools over so we've got more space. You don't get crooked up here. That's a much easier to move to make. And think about, I've shown people, quite a few people this before, personally, even the Falcon. And one thing to think about is having the C, D and G, it's okay to move up the white notes to make room for that rotation to get your thumb in. If I was vehemently saying, I need to play it there, I can see why that might be really hard. And I, I've tried to think why people find it hard, because I'm saying, all you're doing is moving one note. But allow those fingers to rotate, slide up the white keys, and ah. Uh. Now we can play that. Now, the magic to this, and why I call it five ways of playing the five chord, is that that whole idea about the number system is because the white notes are all in C major scale. C being one, D being two, and so on. Three, four, five. And when we're hitting that fifth note, you can hear it, it wants to resolve. Back to the one, back to C. And when you're on the five chord, it's pretty much fair game. You can uh, get away with murder, harmonic murder. Uh, but this is a nice way to start introducing complex sounds. But I swear you've only got to move your thumb at this point. So check it out. If I walk up the scale. Now, 
Now I'm gonna walk up, but on that fifth one, when I get to the G, I'm gonna move my thumb up. Check it out. Cool. It might be, I know it's not the coolest thing to mention at the moment, but you might remember sounds like, I believe I can fly, that Disney style of harmony coming out. Now there's other ways we can voice it, but let's stick with this voicing. So we've got a G on the bottom. And why it's five ways to play the five is one thing about jazz that I realized was that I'd read the real book and it would say, oh, nine, 13, sharp 11. And in my brain, I thought I had to learn a whole new chord for each one of them. When really, they were the bits left out of a full voicing like this. I'll explain. So once I've got this shape, to get those five chords that I've lured you in with, with a clickbait title, all we need to do is then descend our pinky And you know, da, 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 da. you've heard that if you ever watch like a Fred Astaire movie or those beautiful things, you ever watch Nora Jones. And what will happen is in an arrangement, say the first time the five comes around, they might be like. And then we sing another verse. Second time around, they might go. And then the third chorus. And then at the end, they'll do the full shebang. So what are we doing again? We're playing a G in the left hand. We're doing this shape, A flat, C, D, G. And then to get those other chords, all you need to do, you can either move your pinky down or I use my fourth finger. Second one will have an F on it. And these are staying exactly the same. So just go, okay, I don't need to use any RAM on that. I'm just thinking about this note. G, F, E, that D works. Even this B works down here. And that They're all the white notes, but there's something magic about this tension here. that gives it that sound. So let's put it in context with, let's do this like Stand By Me, okay? Crowbar them all in, but you can hear if I was tasteful, I maybe would have done one, the end of the first chorus, second, and at the end, we can give it the. And then, if you want to be really posh, I've done another video on this, I think it was an expensive chord one. There, I just put what's called the major seven, which makes everything sound like jazz. But if we do the. The first video that I've done in this series was about getting your thumb over. So that sounds really rich, right? Now, try this. Take a basic C major triad and play a D major triad. So move up one note. So it's D, F sharp, A, and play that. So the whole thing. Hopefully that's sunk in. I know these aren't the most official lessons, but hey, I'm not an official teacher. I'm just trying to get to the real stuff that I use day to day to pretend that I really know what I'm doing. So thanks for watching, thanks for the Falcon. And uh, there's gonna be, gonna be one more of these. Lord knows what it'll be about, but they're fun. 
doing them for you, I will leave you with a bit of uh, our favourite artist, R. Kelly. <laughs> Mm-hmm. <laughs>